Captain Abraham Troer's rise to power in Burkina Faso defied conventional wisdom, especially given his military rank as a captain, which traditionally does not position someone as the military and state's leader. Troer's unique path to leadership, on the other hand, can be attributed in large part to his educational background. His deep understanding of Burkina Faso's history, gained through university education in the country, was instrumental in shaping his worldview and leadership style. Chor's education not only provided him with historical knowledge, but also a nuanced understanding of his country's dynamics and needs. This foundation paved the way for his rise to power. Returning to his alma mater as the highest authority in Burkina Faso, rather than as a student, demonstrated the transformative power of education in shaping leaders. Chor's ability to leverage his education and historical insights enabled him to navigate the complexities of governance, earn the trust of his people, and gain global recognition, cementing his position as one of the world's most influential leaders. This outlier trajectory demonstrates the power of education in shaping leaders and steering nations. He revealed a lot about the changes he was planning and what he expected from the students during his address to the students. Simply put, he is considering producing hundreds of Abraham Trores from the students who will lead the country. But what else did he reveal in his interview with university students that has terrified Europe, particularly France? Let's find out more in this video. Following a military coup on September 30, 2022, Captain Abraham Troer took control, emphasizing the urgent need to address Burkina Faso's deteriorating security situation. At the time, Western countries had no idea how he would accomplish this. They even mocked the situation in Burkina Faso, certain that Ibrahim Tror would fail to handle the situation. But Tror surprised everyone when he announced that elections were not the top priority. Instead, the transitional government prioritized national security before proceeding with elections. Captain Troer emphasized the importance of inclusive elections, which allow all citizens to vote in candidates to campaign freely throughout the country. That's when the West realized Ibrahim Troer had big plans to change everything. He stated that no elections will be held solely in Ouagadougou or Bobo de Lasso, so security must come first. He clarified that he was elected for security reasons, accusing other countries of impeding the process by withholding critical equipment. According to him, imperialist-influenced countries were obstructing equipment delivery, causing delays, while simultaneously urging Burkina Faso to speed up elections. Despite the fact that the next presidential election is scheduled for July 2024, with constitutional reforms planned, Captain Trory clarified that security remains the top priority in a country dealing with jihadist violence. He emphasized the importance of organizing elections, but did not provide a specific date. He postponed elections for a reason that you will learn about soon. When Trory was sworn in as interim president at the age of 34, he became the world's youngest leader, pledging to regain territory and support a transition leading to elections in July 2024. Trare also announced plans to amend the country's constitution in order to make it more representative of the masses and less reflective of the views of a select few. He postponed elections in order to implement constitutional changes and train a new generation of leaders centered on a strategic approach to governance and nation building. This seemed unbelievable at first, but as things have become clear, it is a feasible plan. Following his assumption of power following a military coup, President Traoré emphasized the urgent need to address Burkina Faso's deteriorating security challenges, which include terrorist attacks, a deepening crisis, and a reported coup attempt. Given these pressing security concerns, the argument goes, Traoré chose to stabilize the country before holding elections. The postponement of elections, however, is not solely due to a disregard for democratic processes, but rather to a deliberate decision to implement constitutional changes. Traoré has expressed a desire to reform the constitution in order to make it more inclusive and representative. These changes could include the participation of religious and community leaders, making the constitution more representative of Burkina Faso's diverse population. Another aspect of the argument suggests that Traoré is taking advantage of the delay to groom a new generation of leaders. Traoré hopes to create a political environment conducive to the development of young leaders 
who will play a significant role in Burkina Faso's future governance by postponing elections and focusing on constitutional reforms. This is consistent with his earlier pledge to facilitate a transition leading up to elections in July 2024. The argument also implies that Traoré's approach is a reaction to Burkina Faso's historical challenges. Taking the time to enact constitutional changes and potentially inviting a broader range of leaders to participate could be a deliberate effort to address long-standing issues and lay the groundwork for a more inclusive and stable political landscape. Furthermore, it is suggested that the evolving geopolitical landscape, marked by shifts in alliances with countries such as Russia and distancing from former partners such as France, will influence trial-raised decision-making. This geopolitical shift could be part of a larger strategy to position Burkina Faso in a way that aligns with the president's vision for the country's future. Even if we could understand constitutional changes, it was difficult to grasp Tror's vision for developing future leaders. While he desires a strategic shift in leadership development in Burkina Faso, Tror advocates for cultivating a new leadership class, emerging from universities, rather than continuing the pattern of entrusting the country to previously corrupt leaders. This strategy aims to raise a generation of educated and ethical citizens capable of becoming future leaders and effectively governing the country. Several key points are included in the rationale for the trial raise argument. To begin, he recognizes the historical challenges associated with corrupt leadership in Burkina Faso and intends to break free from this deeply entrenched cycle. This pledge demonstrates a commitment to fostering a new era of governance characterized by integrity and accountability. Second, focusing on universities demonstrates a commitment to investing in education as a key driver of national development. Trial Rays envisions a pool of well-educated individuals equipped with the skills and knowledge required to navigate the complexities of governing a country by cultivating leadership capabilities within educational institutions. Third, the Trial Rays' emphasis on universities reflects a belief in education's transformative power to shape ethical and competent leaders. The goal is to instill values, critical thinking, and a sense of responsibility in future leaders, preparing them to face governance challenges. Burkina Faso's long-term vision is reflected in the strategy of developing a leadership class in universities. Rather than relying on short-term fixes or quick political solutions, Trial Rays envisions a long-term and progressive leadership structure that contributes to the country's development and stability. By focusing on universities and recognizing their potential and dynamism, Trial Rays aims to empower the younger generation. This approach seeks to harness the energy and ideas of the youth for the betterment of the country, departing from traditional leadership models that may have excluded or marginalized this demographic. Even though Ibrahim Traoré is the world's youngest president, he is also the most intelligent. Recognizing the importance of cultivating leadership qualities in the younger generation is an aspect of good leadership. Honest leaders never come to power for themselves, but to better the country, and Ibrahim Tror intends to do just that. Student leadership development is viewed as a strategy for achieving long-term progress. Rather than focusing solely on immediate concerns, Ibrahim Tror wishes to devote time and resources to shaping the minds and abilities of the next generation. This proactive approach is seen as a way to ensure the country's long-term stability and prosperity. To practically begin this step, Ibrahim Tror unexpectedly visited the University of Ouagadougou, where he earned his first geology degree. During this visit, he made several statements that provided insights into his character and, as a result, shaped his leadership style. Tror discussed his intentions to reduce the number of political parties in the country during the question-and-answer session as part of his strategy to restore civilian rule. He also expressed his desire to reclaim the country's sovereignty from a specific nation, though he did not name it. Tror addressed the university's immediate concerns before delving into political issues, promising to provide free optical fiber internet to students. He assured them that precautions would be taken to ensure their safety and prompt return to class. This commitment was extended to all universities, with a focus on the importance of students resuming their studies and integrating into the student community. Tror also discussed ongoing discussions with various countries to facilitate student exchanges for technological advancements. 
He emphasized the importance of acquiring laboratory equipment to improve educational quality, particularly in fields such as geology. Chor emphasized the significance of collaboration in gradually re-equipping universities and schools to ensure students receive high-quality training and education. Chor mentioned discussions with the newly appointed Minister of Youth and Colleagues in Higher and Basic Education when discussing the need for educational reform. In response to a question about transition plans to return the country to civilian rule, he outlined upcoming educational reforms. Concerning political issues, Chor emphasized the importance of reducing the number of political parties, stating that a comprehensive reform was in the works and that failing to implement it now could lead to neglect in the future. This is something that no other African leader has ever considered. This demonstrates what Ibrahim Chor intends to do with Burkina Faso in the coming years. Ibrahim Chor referred to the students as decision makers who he was willing to back. He stated that leaders from all over the country must work together to build something meaningful with a clear ideology in order to effect change. He revealed that reforms are currently being implemented for this purpose and that a framework for consultations will be established. Chor shared a principle with the students, saying that it is difficult for him to understand people who are unable to assist others. He said that if God gave him a billion dollars and he couldn't use half of it to help a young person, he would beg God not to give him the money. Take note of how he interacted with the students, teaching them moral principles and how to help others. It's because Ibrahim Troora feels obligated to teach and groom students whenever he is in their company. They are, after all, the future leaders. Troora expressed concern that the youth remain actively involved because the fight for sovereignty is a long-term battle that requires a great deal of endurance. While refraining from saying things that may offend, Burkina Faso's commitment to the fight for independence is unwavering. He stated that the necessary procedures have been initiated and are proceeding smoothly. He also stated that he does not wish for violence. Rather, he urged the youth to avoid violence, stay healthy, and focus on nation building. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos about black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let us now proceed. Perhaps he wants to change the French influence education system in Burkina Faso. Every Francophone African country, including Burkina Faso, follows the French education model, and the teaching language is also French, which unconsciously makes Burkina Faso students loyal to French. The educational system in Francophone African countries, such as Burkina Faso, is based on the French educational model. This structure dates back to the colonial era, when these countries were ruled by France. As a result, throughout their academic careers, students in Francophone African countries are exposed to the French language, literature, and history. The French education system's influence in these countries raises concerns about students' unconscious loyalty to France. French culture, history, and perspectives are frequently highlighted in the curriculum, fostering a connection to the former colonial power. This influence can shape students' worldviews and identities, creating a subliminal allegiance to French ideals and values. The use of French as the primary language of instruction strengthens this bond even more. Students improve their French skills, and the language becomes a tool for gaining knowledge and opportunities. As a result, the French language is extremely important, and students may develop an unconscious affinity for French culture and ways of thinking. The educational content, which is typically designed and delivered by French institutions, may present a Eurocentric worldview, which may contribute to a sense of loyalty or knowledge of French perspectives. Furthermore, the emphasis on French literature and history contributes to cultural alignment, which obscures the African nation's rich and diverse cultural heritage. You should be aware that during the colonial period, France used an educational system imposed on its African colonies to control them. The French colonial administration believed that shaping the minds of the younger generation through education was a powerful method of maintaining control, ensuring loyalty to France, and maintaining the colonized population's subordinate status. France wanted to assimilate African populations into French culture. 
Colonial authorities hoped to instill French values and perspectives in the minds of African students by introducing the French language, literature, and history into the educational system, fostering a sense of identification with French ideals. In schools, French became the primary language of instruction. The goal of teaching in French was to establish a linguistic link between African students and France. Communication with colonial authorities was facilitated by proficiency in the French language. It provided access to higher education and better opportunities, creating a reliance on the French language and culture. The school curriculum was carefully crafted to present a Eurocentric worldview, while making French history, culture, and perspectives appear superior. This tightly controlled educational content aimed to shape students' worldviews by aligning them with French interests while undermining appreciation for local cultures and histories. The goal of this education system was to create an elite class of Africans educated in the French tradition. This is still happening today, but Ibrahim Troer intends to change it with all of his power. That is why, unlike previous leaders who sold their countries and became Western puppets, he is engaging with students in his country and preparing them to be future leaders. The face-to-face -face interaction between transition president Ibrahim Troer and the children provided an opportunity to discuss their concerns about peace, security, education, and food security. A spokesperson for Burkina's children addressed an open letter to President Troer, urging him to ensure that internally displaced children have adequate housing and have access to all of their rights. She emphasized that the streets are not a safe environment for children and urged girls to attend school rather than engage in potentially violent domestic work. The ongoing terrorism in Burkina Faso has caused several students to drop out of school. President Ibrahim Troer acknowledged the children's concerns as valid and legitimate. He emphasized that the crux of his fight and the mission of his government is to work toward the fulfillment of all children's rights, including the rights to life and education. President Troer outlined the government's efforts to reopen several schools that had been forced closed due to terrorism. The goal is to establish modern schools that meet educational requirements while also instilling values like patriotism and integrity in order to counter what he refers to as colonial formatting. President Troy assured progress in efforts to re-establish territorial integrity, citing appropriate deployments across the national territory and ongoing operations. President Troy reminded the children of their responsibilities to the nation, parents, and elders, in addition to improving living conditions. He emphasized the importance of respecting elders and loving one's homeland. Despite the difficult security situation, President Troy expressed his commitment to working to ensure that Burkina Faso's children grow up in peace, have access to quality education, and eat nutritious food. He emphasized the importance of promoting civic and moral values in order to achieve long-term peace and strengthen social cohesion. In response to the children's plea for safety, President Troy predicted a patriotic generation from them and urged them to actively contribute to Burkina's long-term social transformation. He emphasized the importance of good citizenship, listening to elders, and developing positive values. Ibrahim Troy wants to change Burkina Faso's French-influenced education system so that future leaders are inherently loyal to the country. As a result, he becomes a threat to the West because he opposes their imperialism. He has pledged to fight imperialism and neocolonialism, citing Che Guevara and drawing inspiration from the nation's historical revolutionary figure, Thomas Sankara. He is doing his job and expects the rest of the country to follow suit. Ibrahim Troy has changed the face of the country both nationally and internationally up to this point. Burkina Faso has strong diplomatic ties with revolutionaries in Nicaragua, Venezuela, Cuba, and Iran. Furthermore, the country has developed relations with Russia, a major NATO adversary. Discontent led to another coup in Burkina Faso in September 2022, bringing another nationalist military leader named Ibrahim Troor to power. He became one of the world's youngest leaders at the age of 34. Troor promised a national refoundation and comprehensive modernization to address issues such as violent extremism and corruption, as well as a complete overhaul of the government system. In his speeches, Troor often concludes with the chant, homeland or death, 
we will prevail. As president, Troer has embraced some of the revolutionary ideas of Thomas Sankara, a Marxist Birkenev military officer and committed pan-Africanist who led a socialist revolution in Burkina Faso in 1983. Sankara instituted game-changing policies in land reform, infrastructure development, and public health and literacy initiatives. Burkina Faso, led by Sankara, challenged French neocolonialism and pursued an anti-imperialist foreign policy. However, Sankara was deposed and assassinated in a coup, led by his former ally Blaise Kampora, who shifted to a right-wing stance and allied with the US and France, ruling through rigged elections until 2014. Today, Ibrahim Trora draws heavily on Sankara's legacy, expressing a desire for West Africa and the continent as a whole to be liberated from Western neocolonialism. He attended the Russia-Africa Summit in St. Petersburg in July. Petersburg delivering a fiery anti-imperialist speech emphasizing the importance of independence and non-interference in domestic affairs. In his speech, he discussed sovereignty and the fight against imperialism. He expressed frustration at the lack of answers to why resource-rich Africa remains the poorest region on the planet. He emphasized colonialism and imperialism's enduring impact on African countries, characterizing it as a modern form of slavery, a vicious and brutal legacy that the continent has endured for decades. President Troy emphasized the importance of African leaders resisting puppetry in the hands of imperialists, claiming that a slave who does not fight for freedom is not worthy of indulgence. To meet the needs of the people, he advocated for self-sufficiency, particularly in food supplies. Troy concluded with the chant, Homeland or Death, quoting Cuban revolutionary leader Ernesto Che Guevara. Burkina Faso's new nationalist government has also sought to strengthen ties with Latin American revolutionary movements. In May, Prime Minister Apollinaire Joachim Quilom de Tambela traveled to Venezuela to meet with President Nicolas Maduro. Tambela also visited Nicaragua in July to commemorate the 44th anniversary of the Sandinista Revolution, attending a celebration in Managua on July 19. Following the Burkina Faso coup in September 2022, President Cher surprised observers by appointing Apollinaire Joachim Quilom de Tambela, a longtime supporter of Thomas Sankara, as his prime minister. Tambela, a Sankara ally during the Burkina Bear Revolution, was instrumental in organizing solidarity for the new leftist government in the 1980s. Tambela, who holds pan-Africanist views and is affiliated with communist and left-wing organizations, is tasked with overseeing the nation's refounding. Chor's selection of Tambela as prime minister demonstrates Chor's commitment to resurrecting Sankara's revolutionary legacy. Ibrahim Tror has forever changed Burkina Faso because after him, the world will see an army of loyal leaders like Tror himself. Captain Ibrahim Tror emphasized the African continent's maturity and independence, claiming that the continent no longer welcomes outside interference in its affairs, and vehemently opposes the imposition of ideas that are incompatible with its cultures. As a multipolar world emerges, Captain Ibrahim Tror asserted that Africa deserves to play a significant role in it. Following the second Russia-Africa summit, the Burkinabe leader called for Africa to be given the recognition it deserves, advocating for a larger role in the UN and demanding respect on the global stage. He was adamantly opposed to multipolarity and sovereignty, stating unequivocally that interference in African affairs is no longer acceptable, is no longer do you agree with Abraham Chor's strategy of encouraging students to become future leaders before transferring power to them? Isn't it true that Chor is attempting to develop and unite the nation in ways that no one else has? Please share your thoughts on how Chor should use his power to rebuild Burkina Faso. Do you want to see more videos like this? If you answered yes, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon next to it. We've decided to bring videos about something that no one talks about, black culture, civilization, history, and evidence of how glorious blacks have been. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video.